Hello. Welcome to EasyVB, Tutorial 16. In this tutorial we will learn about the Form 1 Load Event, which is one of the most useful events in Visual Basic, and one which you will use as routine in almost every application. We met the Load Event briefly in Tutorial 12, where we used it to initialize an object variable with a value. In this tutorial we will use the Load Event to do a bit more, with a simple example application, which will make use also of our learning from earlier tutorials in the series. We have created a small form, and placed two controls on it, a text box and a button. We have positioned the button in the top left of the form, and the text box in the bottom right. We have also increased the size, and made bold the font size, of both controls, for better visibility, as well as changed some styles and properties of the button. The form size is 300 times 150 pixels. To create a form one load event, we can click on the form and go to the events menu, but, more simply, we can just double click on the form, and the form one load event handler, will be created. So what does this event do? As with other events it does nothing unless it contains some written code. So let's write a few lines of code inside the event. Write, me.location equals new point 100, 100. Then, on another line write, me.size equals new size 600, 300. And, on one further line write, me.backcolor equals color lime. Run the application to see what happens. Note that the form opens in a screen location, 100 pixels right and 100 pixels down from the screen top left corner. The form size has increased to 600 pixels wide and 300 pixels high. And the form back color has changed to lime. Now look at the code. Note that on each line we use the term, me, and not, form 1, to refer to, form 1. We need to be aware of this, and this is unlike other objects or controls that we would refer to directly by their actual name. Generally, we need to always refer to the form as, me. So it is clear what the code is doing. The instructions are subjects we have already learned about. Coordinates, sizes, and back color. But, the important understanding about the load event, is that the instructions are executed when the application is started, or loaded. This is tremendously useful to initiate many different properties about the application, to get it in the correct state and appearance before the user starts using it. For example, an application may be intended to run on many different screen sizes, and so the load event can be used to obtain the PC screen size settings, and then to size the form to match those settings, either to fill the full screen, size proportionately to the screen, and, or, center on the screen. Okay. So we now understand what form one load does. But let's try now taking our load event instructions and putting them into a user declared subroutine. We covered user declared subroutines in tutorial 10, so watch that tutorial again, if you have not watched it already. Create a new private sub called form one stuff. Cut the form one load event instructions and paste these into the private sub, form one stuff. Now copy the private sub name, form one stuff, into the load event for form one. Run the application and we can observe that, it does as it did before. Look again at the code. What is happening? Well when we run the application it immediately goes to the load event, and executes the code in the load event. In this case the code in the load event is a user declared subroutine, so the load event makes a call to that sub, form one stuff, and then executes the code in, form one stuff. But why would we want to do this? Why not just have all the code in the load event? Well there is good reason. Depending on the complexity of the application, the load event requirements may be very many instructions, all setting up different things, so it may be clearer, more readable, and more manageable, to have the load event instructions split into a number of distinct and separate subs. To explore this further, let's add another user declared subroutine. Call it button stuff, and copy its name into the form one load event.
Right, btn one dot location equals new point, 50, 100. Then on another line right, btn size equals, new size, btn dot width, plus 80, comma, tb1 dot height. Then another line, btn one dot back color equals, color dot light blue. And a final line, btn one dot text equals, then in quotes, time now is, space, double chevron. Run the application, and observe. We can see now that, with our load event, we are also manipulating the position, appearance, and text, of the button. Ok, one more user declared subroutine to add. Call it text box stuff, and copy its name into the form one load event. Write tb one dot location equals new point btn one dot right comma btn one dot top. Then write tb one dot size equals new size two hundred comma tb one dot height. And another line tb one dot text equals format date and time dot now comma and in quotes h h colon m m colon s s space t t run the application, and observe. We can see now that with our load event we are making a further manipulation, and changing the position and appearance of the text box, and writing an initial string value into, the text box, which is the current time. Note that the written string of text is highlighted. But we can prevent that. This is more of a side subject for this tutorial, but we will cover it anyway, for good awareness. Click on the text box, and go to the properties menu. Scroll down to tab stop, then change true, to, false. Run the application. We can observe now that the written string of text is no longer, highlighted. Add one more event handler to complete the application. Add a button click event, for button btn1. For the instructions of the click event, copy the instruction line which writes the current time into the text box. Run the application, and click the button several times. We can observe the time updating with each click. OK. That completes the tutorial for the load event. The simple application demonstrates form one load, and some of the tasks we can do with this useful event. In fact the load event can be used to execute all manner of tasks when the application is loaded, it just depends what the particular application may require. We would recommend that, as a standard practice, when setting up a Windows Forms application, the very first action taken should be to create a form one load event, as most likely it will be needed. For structure in the written code. It is good to find the load event as the very first sub in your code, directly below the declared variables, as per this example from tutorial 12. If the load event is added later, just cut and copy it to the top of the code in a position below the declared variables. In the next tutorial, we will learn more about the picture box control, and how we may use it in applications. Thanks for watching. We hope this tutorial was useful. If it helped you, please like share, and subscribe.